thanks for joining me. Now, before we even get started, I want you to hit pause and tell me what you're doing right now. You can go back and edit comments later if you want to add something, but just let me know what you're doing right now because this may be a long one, no surprise, <laughs> because I have a lot to share. So first of all, I'll say happy Juneteenth. Today is Monday, June 20th, in which the U.S. celebrates Juneteenth. If you're not familiar with Juneteenth, it is a celebration for the end of slavery in terms of the last slaves being notified two years, almost two years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. In the U.S., a number of different areas across the country recognizes Juneteenth on different dates. And that is because that is when the information made it to those slaves that they were finally free. And so while it is a federally recognized holiday on June 19th, the day is celebrated across the country throughout the year, depending on where you live. So happy Juneteenth. Now in this episode, we're actually going to talk about my Juneteenth make, which is right here. <laughs> I was really, really excited to undertake this project. If you remember in my last video, I mentioned all of my plans in terms of my tankathon and things I was going to make for my mom and that there will be a couple of mystery makes. Well, this whole look actually was a mystery to me. So I knew I wanted to do the dress. I had an inspiration video or inspiration pic that I had come across and I was like, oh, I want to make something just like that. It was fabulous. And so I was able to actually find a local African shop here in my city and not too far away either. And so I was able to visit them and I happened upon this fabric. And so I bought six yards of the fabric. Now I knew I didn't need all six yards to make the dress. And so I figured, oh, okay, what are some other things that I can make with it? And I came up with a couple. <laughs> so to start, we're going to review McCall's 8139. I'll pop a picture of the actual envelope and the line drawings, but this is a basic shirt dress. Now it comes in three different lengths. However, I wanted a full length or floor length dress. And so I knew I would need it, I needed to extend it. And I extended it by 10 inches so that it would hit the floor. Now I'm 5'5", five five, so I took the longest version or the longest view and I added 10 inches to that and it scraped the floor. So I think if I make this dress again and do a full length, I'll actually do 11 inches just so I can have a wider hem. Now mind you, it hit the floor with me wearing flats. And so if I do decide to wear a wedge or a heel or something, that's why I'll need that additional inch so that it can still kind of skim the ground um, when I wear it with something that elevates my height. So again, I'm 5'5", five five. I added 10 inches to the length of this dress so that it would hit the floor. Now in terms of the dress and the construction of it, I would say that um, it is a pretty good maybe not so beginner friendly, but if you've undertaken some buttonholes and a collar a couple of times, you should be able to make your way through this. Now, I took about five or six days, five or six days to actually complete this. And it wasn't because it was difficult. It was because I knew with the Ankara fabric, I would need to finish all of the raw edges. And so what I decided to do was actually serge everything before I started the construction of it. So that took, you know, maybe a day, a day and a half just to serge every single <laughs> edge and then remark. Cause I do clip into my notches. And so I just used a chalk to actually make a line or a mark where the notch is because if using your serger you probably or you will go over the notch so I wanted to make sure that I kept those um, notches very visible as I was putting together the garment so I remarked and surged every single 
edge of this dress. So we're talking two bodice fronts, two bodice backs, two sleeves. I only surged three of the sides of the collar. Um, and we'll get into that a little later, but it was also the skirt fronts. So two of those, two skirt or two skirt backs, and then four pocket pieces. So that's a lot of surgeon. So that took quite a bit of time. To actually put the dress together, I went out of order again in terms of how the con uh, instructions would like for you to put it together. I actually started with the skirt because that was the easiest I'll say to put together you just have your skirt front back and add pockets to it it does have back waist starts but those are pretty easy if you know how to trace those and pin and just follow a straight line you can do that fairly easy so I constructed the skirt first and then I started on the bodice the bodice again was fairly simple you just have your front and back it does ask that you would uh, set in your sleeve. I did my sleeve on the flat method. And so um, it wasn't perfect on the actual shoulders. However, because my fabric is so busy or the print on the fabric is so busy, you really can't tell. So I was okay with that. And then you construct your button down placket. Now for me, I um, again, because I extended the dress, I actually had to extend the placket for the buttons and the button holes. Wasn't a big deal, just added 10 inches to that and I was able to sew that down. What I ran into some issues with was how to put the placket together. I could not understand those instructions to save my soul. And I went and looked, researched here on YouTube, a couple other videos like, okay, how do you put together a placket that is extended on the front bodice? Because in some cases, there's two different types, I should say. So you have the placket where it is a separate pattern piece and you just stitch that on. And then you have it to where it is um, already a part of the bodice front. And so you kind of do three, four different folds <laughs> and then you make that work. Well, the way they were saying to fold to the front and fold to the back and cut this or trim this, I just, I couldn't figure it out. And so I tried and tried, actually made a little snip at the collar thinking I had it and it just, it was just wrong. I couldn't do it. So I found another video that talked about um, how this other designer, she kind of walked through how to fold a placket. And so I used her method. Unfortunately, because I had already made a small trim in the corner of it, I needed to finagle some way to hide that. <laughs> so there again, it was a little bit more frustration in terms of, uh, okay, it's just like a cut right here at the end of the collar that sits there. So if you're looking at the dress, you would see it. So I needed some way to hide that. Long story short, I just cut a small piece of fabric, put some double-sided hem tape on it, and then just, you know, fused it to the top. A very busy print, so I don't think it's that obvious. Plus, it actually was able, I was actually able to tuck it into the collar, so it's a little hidden for now. So I had some issues with actually figuring out how to fold the placket. The other issue I ran into was the collar. Because I had changed the way um, I, I guess, folded in or constructed the placket, the collar didn't sit as clean as it should have. And so again, just taking my time, taking an overnight sleep, <laughs> and trying to come up with something the next day, I again was able to finagle it to where I think it looks okay. Busy fabric, which is, you know, is a godsend. So you really don't see it. I don't think it's as noticeable. However, um, I was able to attach the, the collar to it and it, to me, it looks good. So all in all, I'll say, that's why I say it's not necessarily a beginner friendly pattern only because with that placket, the, well, the way the instructions show you how to put the placket together and then making sure that it's in line with how it, you know, fits in with the collar. That can be a little daunting, I guess. However, 
it's something that you, and maybe it was just me, but <laughs> something that you can work through, I would say make a muslin. I didn't, but make a muslin to test it one, two, and 12 times before you actually cut into your fashion fabric. But all in all, I will say I do like the dress. I'm looking forward to wearing it more. There's a couple of things though that I would change on it. One would be the, the placket, like either figuring out how to, to do it based on their McCall's instructions or figuring out how to modify it to the video that I found where she shows you how to construct it and making sure that I modify the collar in some way that it sits, at, you know, the way it's supposed to. So that would be one. The second thing would be is actually the belt. So this belt isn't as long as I would like it to be. So it hits just like it's supposed to on the pattern envelope. Perfect. However, I wanted mine just a little longer. So what I'll probably do, and I knew this when I had constructed it, I, I didn't think about it when I was cutting it out. But once I saw, once I got to this part and saw how long it was, I knew that I wanted to make it longer. But for the gram, right, <laughs> I needed to finish this or finish it as much as I could to take the picture. I did not surge this, so it'll be easier to go in and deconstruct this. And what I basically did was with right sides together, I sewed three, oh, what did I do? I sewed two sides of it. And then for this third side, what I did was just, you know, turn it right sides out and then just fold it under about a quarter of an inch or so. And it's actually this other edge, um, about a quarter of an inch or so, and then just base stitch it stitched it so now I could just pull these out fairly simply turn it back inside out undo the stitches and then what I'll probably do is add about six or so inches of um, fabric to both ends the reason why I'm doing both ends is because where you connect this this sits right in the you know right in the center of the belt so it's easy to know that when you're putting it on, like, okay, here's the seam, put it in the back, you know, put it in the center of your back and be able to tie it. If I just added it to one end, then this seam would, it wouldn't be centered anymore. It would either be to the left or to the right. And so you'd have to, well, at least I would, because, you know, that's just me. <laughs> I would even it out and then tie it up. So this will just help me to keep it even in the middle with this back seam of just adding the six inches um, or maybe three inches to both sides. I think I want a total of six inches. So yeah, three inches to both sides. Also, I would probably add, or the third thing I would do different is add, um, I think they're called thread chains, chain threads to the sides of the dress and then one in the back just to hold this. They have very wide belt um, belt holders, I guess, <laughs> to on the dress now. I didn't want that. I, I wanted to, it to be more continuous in, in the look. And so I didn't want it, I didn't want to add their pieces. And so I think I will just add that it'll just hold the belt, you know, while it's hanging up or making sure it doesn't move around as I'm wearing it. So that's what I would add or change to it. But all in all, I do like the pattern. There's a couple of things that I need to finish on the pattern. One would be the hem. When I was taking pictures, I wanted to see just how long it hit. And like I said, it's hitting right at the ground. So it'll be a very narrow hem that I add to it because again if I'm wearing heels or a wedge I, I still want it to be as long as possible and then I still need to finish the hem on the sleeve again I wanted to see how long it hit in the pictures and then take you know take it from there and so what I'll probably do is go up about I'd say three fourths of an inch to maybe a full inch and then just twin stitch that those sleeves and then the, the dress for me will be done so all in all really liked it McCall's 8139 now 
I bought six yards of this fabric, right? And so I knew the dress wasn't going to take all six inch, uh, six yards. Even with me adding the 10 inches to the front, so that's, you know, 10 inches to the front as well as 10 inches to the back. So I'm eating up some yardage there. But I still knew I had more to go, but not enough to make another full garment because you know, there's some very long pieces or, you know, some oddly shaped pieces. And so I put on my thinking cap and tried to figure out what else could I make with it. And so, hmm, let's pause here again. You tell me, what do you think my number two piece was <laughs> for this look? I'll wait. Okay, so did you add it to the comments yet? <laughs> so for my number two piece, I wanted to go with a hat. So I was torn between, do I want to make a full sun hat? Now, some of y'all may think, oh, okay, sun hat or a bucket hat. And you're not wrong. However, when I say full sun hat, like my ultimate hat is about 15 inches of brim. Like I want everybody to be able to get up under my hat with me and be blocked from the sun. So I wanted a full sun hat. I knew I didn't have enough fabric for that. So I was like, okay, what's plan B? Bucket hat, I didn't think it really went with the sundress look. So I didn't want to do that. So then my third option was a hat that I've made a couple times. So I did do a muslin with it the first time out I, and it was a true muslin. So it was not fully lined or anything like that. It was just the four pieces. Let's see, one, two, yeah, three, four pieces, put them together to see how the fit was because it wasn't actually for me. It was for someone else. And so I did the muslin and then I actually did um, a full hat or what I thought was going to be a full hat but it really wasn't because I wasn't sure of the person's head size. So it was, okay, let me just do it enough to wear it because I have to take it to you out of state that if you decide you wanted to wear it, you wouldn't look crazy, but it's not necessarily a finished hat. <laughs> um, and so that was number two. And so that one came out better than number one. So I figured, oh, I can do this hat for, you know, my number two piece with this fabric. So you're like, okay, V, what is it? It is a, it's a fedora. So I'll pop some pictures of me in the hat as well. So this is Vogue 8869. It is a men's hat pattern. And um, like I said, I've done it a couple times. I did it this time. I, for this third time, I'll, I'll say, because I kind of knew what I was getting into, it went a little better. Still have some hookups um, or some hiccups, you know, here and there in terms of really being able to stitch it smoothly. I did find a video of someone and, well, I watched a few videos, but this one video, she did like the most basic thing and it was like, oh, yes, that is so helpful. <laughs> so, this fedora, if you can see here, there's the front that kind of dips down, you know, in a curve, and then you have the back. Well, when you're putting this top part with the crown, oh my goodness, like, it, you have to trim the crown in order for the top part to fit in. So I knew that, like, okay, so, I, you know, made a few trims here and there so it could expand and stitch around. It still wasn't working. It I would have just this bubble of fabric that just wasn't like lining up. So I watched the video and basically the lady, the first thing she did was she just took a straight stitch, maybe I'd say four stitches across and back in that front part and in the back part and then she eased the rest of it in. I mean, you do have notches on both sides, so of course you, I pin there. And once I did that, it was so much easier to add more trims in order to, again, like I said, line it up or expand it so that the top and the, and the crown met evenly. And it was like, oh my gosh, 
gosh, why didn't I find this first? So I found that and was able to, you know, construct the hat. Now, this is cotton fabric. So I use both the Ankara on the outside and then I use just a basic cotton, quilting cotton in the as the lining. And I was stuck on the interfacing because the pattern calls for hair canvas. No one sells hair canvas. Or should I say, no one sells the amount of hair canvas I need locally. Hobby Lobby doesn't sell it. Joanne doesn't sell it locally. They sell it in, I think, 10 or 25 yards. And it's like, they, I'm not ever making that many hats in this lifetime <laughs> to use up that much hair canvas. And there's probably other things that you know, I could make with it, but for $300, we're not buying that right now, <laughs> if ever. So that was out. So it was like, okay, what are you going to, what, what am I going to use? I don't know. So I'm trying to look up alternatives and substitutes and just nothing. So finally I said, we need to get this done. We're just going to use a medium weight um, interfacing. So I think it was like Pelon 931 T, D, or D, or something of that effect. And we're just going to make it work. One, this isn't an everyday hat. Two, it's probably not even a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly hat. So for me to stress out this much about a hat that I may wear a couple of times a year, we're not going there. <laughs> we're going to finish this hat. It's going to look great in the picture. And we're going to be done with it. <laughs> and so, again, I just used a, a medium weight interfacing and was able to get this thing constructed. Now, it does have on the pattern for the brim, it has some lines for you to follow. I didn't do that. I just took, you know, I just had on my basic presser foot on my sewing machine. And then I stitched the first line and then I line that stitching line up with the outside of my presser foot and stitched the next line and did that about four times or three or four times and was able to do the stitching for the brim. So it's a, you know, it may be a little wider from the edge to the first stitching line, but again, no one should be that close to my hat to really see that and if they care, great for them. It's not a care for me. So all in all, though, I do like the hat. Um, will I make it again? Most definitely, I will make it again. I believe this one comes in um, small to large or maybe small to extra large. Again, I'll throw the or I'll put the picture of the envelope on the screen. Beginner friendly, it is not. I would say no, just because with that crown and with that brim and figuring out how much to trim and you know how to stitch the front and the back and do all that expanding, that's the hardest part. That's the first step <laughs> and that can be discouraging. It's not difficult. I would just say there's so many other hat patterns that you can start with and then make your way up to this one like a bucket hat or a sun, you know, sun hat or something like that. But again, not difficult. A beginner can do it. I would just say, you know, grace and patience and take your time, watch a few videos and, and really get the feel of how to do that top and that crown part. After that, you're pretty much smooth sailing. They're basically doing top and crown twice because you have a lining there and then you're attaching the two brims attaching that brim to the hat and you're pretty much done so you can do the line the, you know the stitching for the lines or not totally up to you and you have a fedora <laughs> okay now this usually is in what wool and you know maybe some leather or something like that so a much more structured fabric however i was using up my ankara so i wanted it you know for this look so that's make number two. <laughs> okay, so now I had a bit more left and I wanted to make a third piece. So again, hit pause, edit your comments down below and tell me what you think number three is. 
let's let's I'll give you a couple seconds. You ready? <laughs> okay, so let's see if you got it right. So number three is Can you see it all? Am I getting it all in the camera? <laughs> it is a bag. So it is quick. So three, six, one, two. Now, if the other two weren't beginner friendly, this is the most beginner. Well, I don't say the most. One of the most beginner friendly bags that you would be able to make. I would. This gets a beginner stamp of approval. <laughs> So basically, there are two, well, technically, there are two pattern pieces. So you have the bag part, and then you have the handle part. Now, obviously, I didn't use the handle part because it would be this fabric here. But basically, it's just, you know, you would cover this cording with the fabric that you're using, and you would have the bag. So... Again, working with the limited amount of fabric left to do this. So I um, opted to just have four pieces of the Ankara fabric as the outside. And then again, I went in with a lighter version of yellow for the lining. Now that's a little lighter than what I used for the hat. And the reason I wanted to keep it light was because, you know, this is a very light background. And if you do anything, to me, if you do anything dark, it just darkens the outside of the fabric or, you know, darkens this main fabric. And so I wanted to keep it as close to the shade of the dress as possible. But again, you can do what you like because this pattern actually is for some patchwork. So instead of using four of the same colors, you would use four different colors. Or if you wanted to get real fancy, you can fold the fabric in half, although you would have to add some seam allowance, but you can fold the pattern piece in half and make eight different um, fabrics to, to make up this bag. It would cause you to do a little bit more sewing and maybe a little bit more serging or finishing of edges, but it's totally up to you. But you're basically four pattern pieces for the um, outside and then for the inside. Now, I did see some reviews on PatternReview.com. And this lady had a great tip in which she said, you know, I wanted to just knock these out pretty fast. So all I did was take a full 36 by 36 piece of fabric for the lining. And I said, thank you very much. You are a blessing to the community <laughs> because that is what I did in terms of the, the lining piece. It was like just, I didn't have to, you know, fool with cutting four pieces and then stitching those together. It was just cut a full 36 by 36 piece because the bag pieces are 18 by 18. And then you stitch the four of those together to form the outside of the bag, which then you would do you repeat that for the inside. Well, if you just did one full 36 by 36, you wouldn't have to do that at all. Now, what I will say though, is that if you decide to do a full 36 by 36 for the interior, but you leave the exterior as different pieces, your interior piece is going to be a little bigger. Because of course, once you start putting those um, exterior pieces together your seam allowance is going to eat up a little bit of that and i think it's like a quarter inch seam allowance so basically about a half inch you know you're eating up on both sides or horizontally as well as vertically so you know if you did 35 and a half by 35 and a half you know that would be this the same size as the finished pieces once you put all four pieces together a whole lot of math. I hope that made sense. But <laughs> basically, um, that's a shortcut that you can do to this pattern. And then you can do that on the outside as well as on the inside. Just get two thirty. It, now, if you did just full 36 by 36 on the front and back, you don't have to worry about that. You just stitch it up as you need to. 
if you even don't want to do a full bag because now this bag as you can see is very very big like for the pictures i actually had a messenger size bag messenger yeah messenger size bag inside the bag to give it some fullness so you can do a lot if you don't want it to be that big i would say just keep your pieces divisible by nine so you can do 36 by 36 you can do 27 by 27 18 by 18 nine you could I say by nine, you can do it however, whatever dimensions you want to, right? It's totally up to you. But in terms of math, just keep it simple with divisible by nine. <laughs> so that's the bag itself. So then in terms of the construction of it, again, once you have your four pieces together, you'll stitch those together with uh, right sides facing, leave a little area for you to turn it inside out. Then this is where the easy peasy part come in because it's basically you're going to fold two sides inward and you'll add some um, elastic in those casings and then finish them up. And then for the others, you just fold those in and stitch and those will form a casing for your cording. It does call for cording and I use this trim so I don't think this is like technically cording, but um, I use this trim and I got it from Joanne. And I wanted this to just be like finished. I didn't want the fabric over it, but you can certainly do that. And that was the, you know, second piece to the pattern is to have that covered. I, that was gonna be too much for me. So I just wanted it to be a solid color to give it some contrast like it shows in the picture <laughs> on the envelope so that was the bag so in terms of you know three pieces i had my dress i had my hat and then i have my bag now if you can believe it if you can believe it there is actually a fourth piece to this look and i'll let you um i'll let you guess maybe as to what you think this fourth piece is. So in the comments below, hit pause, and in the comments, put what you think that fourth piece is. And I just gave you a, an obvious hint. <laughs> okay, so did you guess what it was? Did you see what it was when I was telling you to guess what it was? It was like an open book test, y'all. I made a watch band, a fabric watch band. Okay, so this pattern is from Five Out of Four Patterns. It's their fabric watch band. And beginner friendly, absolutely. Okay, so basically you have one piece of fabric that you, um, you know, fold right sides together, stitch up, leave the out, outer edges raw, turn it inside out, and then you actually buy this, and I'll take this off, uh, you probably can't see it. I'll put a picture of what the actual pieces look like without being on the fabric, but you just, you know, um, loop it through the connector piece and stitch it down. And there you have your watch band, folks. So I have an Apple Watch and I just went on Amazon, bought the piece, you know, made sure that, and then this one is a 44 inch, I think, watch. And so I made sure that whichever of the, you know, connector pieces I, were, I was buying matched or would fit this watch. So I made sure that I read it and read it, and then I read the reviews and quite a few of those just to make sure and was able to get it. I even think I got it like the next day or something like that and was able to stitch this up. So as far as gifts, oh man, like as long as you know what Apple Watch they have, you can sew up an abundance of these and um, you know give them away as gifts. I will more than likely be adding these to my Etsy shop, but these are um, pretty simple to make. You have elastic in here, which is, you know, what you use to make sure that it stays on your wrist. And she gave some hints as to the size of material to use. I didn't want it as scrunchy 
you know, as maybe some others do. So I went with 15 inches. And then as far as the wrist, now she said her wrist was tiny. I'm not a tiny person. So I went with the largest size of elastic and that thing was flopping all up and down my arm. <laughs> so what I actually, no, 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 no. I went with um, six inches. I didn't go with the largest size. I went, cause she said she uses five, she used five inches. So I went with six inches of elastic and um, it still was too big. So what I did was just take, and you probably won't be able to see it because I'm using black fab, um, black thread in this busy fabric. But I just took like this much and again, just did a quick stitch up and down to, to, to make it fit a little better. And it's still a little loose on me, like it, it can shake around. And I kind of like my watch like just to be set on my wrist and done so what i'll more than likely do is take one of the ends off cut the elastic a little bit shorter and then or maybe take off probably about an inch of elastic and then you know reattach it just so i can get a good snug fit on my wrist but a extremely <laughs> extremely quick um i guess accessory to to make and like I said, a cool gift to give away. Now, I don't know how other watches like a Fitbit or some type of Samsung or Android watch, you know, what their connectors are like or if they sell those separately or if you can even like switch up the band. Of course, with Apple watches, they have all types of bands you can switch up. You can go real fancy or you can do very basic but with this, you know, in terms of something that you can make your own and um, be able to switch out is pretty cool. The pack that I bought from Amazon has had four connector, well, had enough connectors for four bands. So because you're using two connectors each. So I can easily find some other either knit or woven fabric. So that's, you know, it's totally up to you because the elastic is doing the work. It doesn't really matter what your fabric is. So if you wanted to, you know, have different color solids or, you know, have some warm colors and some cool colors, totally up to you because this is just fabric and elastic. Um, depending on the connectors. Now that would be the only thing. I don't know that the connector pieces are machine washable. I would dare say maybe yes, only because for the Apple Watch it's um, waterproof, right? So you, you can submerge this whole watch, the original watch, into water. So I'm presuming that you can wash this, maybe put it into um, a delicates or intimates bag and wash it on delicates or something like that. But don't hold me to it. This is, don't hold me to it, okay? Try at your own risk. <laughs> but you know, this may be a watch band that you can actually wash. So those are my four pieces for my Ankara Juneteenth look. So you have my dress, you have my hat, you have my bag and you have my watch. Now I use pretty much all six yards of this fabric. I do have some long strips left and so you know again whether it's just making up some more of these fabric wristbands or making you know something for some more belts or just using the scraps or other things they're you know pretty thin strips so I won't be able to get large projects out of them, but I may be able to, like I say, just make some smaller things here or there. Like I said, I will be extending my belt for the dress, so I'll use part of it for that. But for the most part, I used just about every nook and cranny of this fabric that I had. So I am so extremely happy about how this all turned out. I took a picture of all of it together for the gram. That is not a look that I'll be sporting on a daily that, as one of my friends said, it's too matchy-matchy. 
And I'm like, I agree, but I needed it for the gram. <laughs> so, um, you know, if anything, you know, the watch, you can wear it with anything. The hat, maybe not so much. And of course the bag, like I said, this thing is huge. So whether you wear it as a purse or as a tote, you know, it's it can be a catch-all bag. You know, this may get more wear than um, the hat itself, but the pieces will definitely be used. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Now, I didn't get into very much in terms of the dress for sizing and all that. So like I said, I showed it before and I can put it up again in terms of what sizes it comes in and what that means in terms of hips, waist, and bust measurements. Um, but do check it out. The McCall's 8139 is something that's still available in the drawers at at least Joanne and on their website and I believe it comes as a digital pattern as well and so hopefully it'll be there indefinitely so it's something that you know whether you're seeing this now in 2022 or in 2025 that it'll still be available but again let me know if you have sewn this dress if you have this pattern if you're thinking about sewing it if you're going to go for their um you know, original three lengths, or if you're going to actually do an extension of it, or hey, you might even want to go shorter. Girl, do you. But uh, let me know what you think about any of it and all of these makes. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for walking through life with me on this sewing journey, and I'll see you next time. Happy Juneteenth. Bye. Bye.